Uh, tonight's a special episode. I've been requesting and suggesting for some time that um, you know, the conversations that we've had around sexual harassment, sexism, um, sexual assault, um, they've been led by me. Uh, and I've been inviting on a regular basis uh, for the women of Progressive Army and women in general who wanted to chime in on this, this discussion to utilize my platform to do so. Um, and this is tonight is just part one in a series of conversations that we'll have um, about this issue, because the best thing that I can do instead of sitting around wondering and looking crazy because I don't understand um, I don't understand it from a male perspective because I just don't, that's just not my world. Right. But instead of always saying that on repeat, like, I don't understand rapists. I don't understand, you know, uh, sexual harassment. I don't, you know, understand it from the perspective of I've never done it. And I don't, you know, instead of just saying that it's time for us to aggressively push back, uh, using all of our resources and all of our platforms. Uh, and so tonight, uh, in this first part, I'm joined first by, of course, my sister, Anoa Changa. Uh, Anoa, thanks so much. You're going to have to unmute yourself. I don't know if you already have on your side, but thanks for joining us. Uh, <clears throat> but she's going to join me for the A part. Hey, Anoa, how's it going? Good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, always a pleasure. So she's here for, I know you're here for the first part. Later on, we're going to be joined by a couple of other voices to discuss this issue. Um, but first I do have, <laughs> I know we have to get, or at least I do, you don't have to, but I have to get the elephant out of the room. I have to address the elephant that's uh, on the table because if I do, if I do, I'm going to be called on it. If I don't, I'm going to be called on it. I'm damned if I do, damned if I don't. But so at least I can do is uh, be true to myself. Uh, Jordan Sheridan from TYT, um, I don't know if any of you have found out as, as of yet, but he's been fired from TYT um, surrounding the allegations of sexual assault um, of one of his journalists at uh, Truth Against the Machine. Now, uh, I've been following it over the weekend and I've been trying to get as much information as I could get, uh, basically, so I can know what the hell I'm talking about. And I know one of the things that's jumped out to me the most about this is regardless of what you think about Jordan or what you think about the allegations, this entire thing got extremely messy and in a, in a, in a very unfortunate way. Uh, if you could take a, if you can imagine a way to make a bad situation worse, I think this entire episode has gone from bad to from horrible to even more horrible with how um, just, just this weekend of allegations going back and forth and who's telling the truth or who who is a spy and who is, you know, there's so many convoluted things around this um, ultimately uh, ending today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Tim Black put out a video saying that he felt that there was a potential lawsuit being threatened against them. And that that caught my attention. That honestly, that that caught my attention because, um, you know, for for a myriad of reasons. But ultimately this afternoon, late this afternoon, Jordan released another medium article saying that he had been released from the Young Turks. Uh, I know I don't if you want to say anything about it. Um, I, I absolutely agree, agree with, with the way you framed, you framed it. it. I know we've I been talking about, about it about internally, internally about, about, um, about um, just as it unfold, right? unfold, right? Even though, Even though the, the allegations involve, you know, behaviors that occur in people's private life, um, you know, uh, we, we had a, we did a conversation on the discourse with Brandon Sutton and, and his crew a uh, Friday night, just kind of just, just, just going off a little bit, not so much in terms of taking sides or any of that nature, but, but, you know, people do what they do behind closed doors. Right. Yeah. However, however, there is a conversation to be had and there, there has been a lot of very bad social media behavior that makes it difficult to just sit by and be unbiased and wait for the investigation right. to you right. know conclude as was the insistence with the initial post that Jordan posted quite honestly just as a lawyer as someone observing all this it just looked like it was not handled very well from those who were purporting to defend Jordan um you know I and I understand that that people feel like challenged like well I want to defend someone I want to stand up and I want to speak up for someone that I support but just right. some even some of the attempts that people made it really fell short in 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 whether or not people believe you know Carly Hammond or anyone else involved um whether they are willing to come forward or they previously said something and now I've changed their mind whatever whatever the situation is right 
the problem has been when we had women in particular saying, well, I know him and it doesn't have to be Jordan. It could be anyone, right? I know him and he treated me so well and we had this great relationship and nothing like this ever happened. So there's no way that he could have done that. Like we got to understand that people have different relationships with different people in their lives, right? Again, I'm not a, I'm not a court. I am I'm a lawyer. I play one on TV and I'm joking. I'm a real one during the day. But 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 we got to really be honest and take a step back and look at the conversation, the way this whole thing is unfolding, because for weeks now, I mean, for at least a month, if not more, we've seen countless stories come out, you know, mainstream media figureheads. I mean, we just saw um, Jeffrey Tambor, um, Charlie Rose. Uh, mm -hmm. There was an allegation about staff at Vox. I mean, basically all the major journalism outlets, uh, 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 movie stars, producers, uh, uh, you know, elected officials, we are seeing heads roll and everybody's like, yes, trust women. Yes. You listen to victims, support the victims. <laughs> now we have something hit and come into the leftist independent media space. And let's just be very clear. There are unfortunately a lot of women out there in our movement spaces that have, and probably men too. Men are less likely because of just the culture and the way, you know, with hyper masculinity are just less likely to talk about these instances. Terry Crews recently um, came forward to talk about, you know, when he was accosted. But like, there are a lot of people who are just regular people in our everyday movement spaces that have had to deal with some degree of these types of issues. And in some instances have still had to work or they've had to withdraw from important work because it wasn't handled effectively or because people, you know, double down because so and so so important to the work that these issues go unchecked and undealt with and unresolved. And part of the reason why, go ahead. I want to jump in right there because I, I think that's important. It's like no one individual is so critical to this work that we can't be replaced um, and that worthwhile um, feeling that you have to protect them. And, and, and now, I mean, I want to make a clear delineation here. I'm not talking about Jordan at this point. I'm talking about this entire movement space at this point because there's nobody that's so important. My show is not that important. People who are may be on the front lines, nobody's so important that we can't uh, that we have to uh, knee jerk reaction, defend them, uh, especially Noah, where you just, you just outlined where we believe this person, we believe that person, we believe that person, we believe, uh, Jer uh, Brett Ratner, we believe that he, he's guilty. We believe that we believe the women in the case of Roy Moore. We believe the women in the case. Some of us believe the women in the case of Al Franken. Well, we just started seeing, we started seeing this before the Jordan thing hit. We started seeing this with Al Franken, right? Absolutely. Like everyone digging up, like I was, and it wasn't just centrist accounts, you know, the the the, the progressive, there, there were some, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We started seeing that with the Al Franken stuff, but the same thing. Oh, they're lying. Oh, she was a playboy bunny. Oh, this, oh, that. And the type of slut shaming and stuff that is happening, um, you know, people, I had someone commenting on one of my posts earlier asking about when are, when are we going to go after sex workers? I've seen people suggest, and Brandon Sutton actually did a really good thread a week or so ago about sex workers and how we shouldn't wish sexual predators on sex workers either. I mean, yeah. what people don't realize, just because that is their business, the sex workers are actually a marginalized and vulnerable population. And we definitely should not be, be wishing people who already are abusing power and, and access to, to, to power um, on a population that is even more vulnerable, right? Um, just, I just, you know, I got so many issues with SVU and the police and things like that, but it's still a guilty pleasure of mine. And there are so many, one of the things that still rings so true and it's a reality is that when you still look at how sex workers will be the ones who are punished and criminalized, even if they're under age, right? So even in a situation where something is technically um, you know, statutory rape or whatever, but they're a sex worker, it's all of a sudden the regular rules go out the door. Same thing in terms of rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment, things of that nature. People act as if just because you're a sex worker, then anything goes. Right. And that and that's not the case. That that, that bodily autonomy still exists in those instances, in all these instances. Like yeah. just because even if it's the same thing when the when once upon a time when marital rape and relationship rape and things like that were not considered real, you know, entities. I know right. why are you talking about this? You know, we've only been talking about sexual assault. Because this is a greater we need to have a greater conversation about how we're communicating and dealing with issues, particularly when they make us uncomfortable, particularly when they involve people that we care about. Yeah. Um you know, like, like, like we really have to find a way to talk and work through things because what will happen is just looking at what's happened over the last several days with the different statements and the, let me screenshot and highlight, you know, and exaggerated comparisons, comparing him to, to Emmett Till and just all types of stuff. You like, saw that. 
there is there is a conversation that's happening and threats of lawsuits if anyone says anything like like there's a it, i understand the desire to defend people that you care about i understand when your professional career is on the line to defend yourself however yeah. there is a degree of accountability that needs to be taken because even assuming the account jordan put forth is true like even if we were assuming that true that's still an environment that's extremely unprofessional and potentially toxic if we're talking about this work that we're all doing if you're someone who's investing in all of us as independent creators to do this work you're entrusting us to not be snorting not not saying that that, that that's what he was doing but seriously though you're you're entrusting us you know right to do you, want us to go out there and, you want us and, to go out there and do the work and not right. go out there and and do anything else and but it's not saying that you can't cut up and do your own thing when we had we enjoyed ourselves when we were in dc when i was with the guys in minnesota we enjoyed ourselves as well but we actually made sure that we were doing what you all entrusted us to do when we when we crowdfunded for you to support us again that's not passing any judgment but i do think that when we're, when we're building these organizations when we're building these 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 whether you're organizations news orgs nonprofits, whatever there's a degree of accountability and professionalism that has to be built into our work right. and we got to be prepared for the repercussions of you know lapses in judgment and that does not mean that your acolytes then go all over social media attacking people saying it's bs because they have a counterpoint now whether or not you know, um, whether or not the allegations are true or not, people still deserve to have their side and it all will come out in a wash, right? If there really was an investigation that was ongoing within TYT, which could be why there has been no statement from TYT, um, that should have been allowed to go forward. Like, again, I understand the need to defend oneself, but the, 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 the incessant harassment that we all witnessed across social media platforms and the statements coming out, I, I mean, y'all need Olivia Pope on speed dial. Just for future <laughs> reference, like yeah. never, ever, 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 ever Tatum folks never, ever, ever put out a statement like that ever again. I don't know who y'all might be able to write, but you, you lack cultural competence in terms of this environment and this atmosphere right now. Progressives right now going off on a handle about all oh, the work and, you know, we need to get back to the real issues, sexual assault, sexual harassment. Yeah, these things are true. very real issues. Racism. These things are very real issues. Oh, identity politics. This is actually exactly why nuance and identity, why it actually matters, because right. there are conversations we need to be having in these spaces about how we're engaging, how we're building, how we're interacting. And, you know, we got some, you know, people, our work is passionate. We, we yeah, end up spending a lot of time with other people away from our homes and stuff like that. Things happen. That's fine. But at the same time, we we gotta have some cult. We have to have some cultural competency. When I and what I mean about that is we need to understand how to discuss these issues, right? right. Again, you want to defend yourself, that's fine. But when you're basically when your version of um of defense is not only is slut shaming, is threatening people with lawsuits, is trying to squash anyone being able to speak or express anything because you don't you don't agree and you want to control the narrative that's the same thing we saw from harry weinstein right like 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 it's hard for me like you know what i'm saying like i'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt and let, let's let's see everything that comes out but at the same time when you start using such heavy-handed tactics like that that does not look good at all yeah. it doesn't let me, let me jump in there because here the other side of this coin is um the i always challenge the audience I always challenge my audience without fail um and i want to challenge my audience in this way specifically we you you don't know us and i'm, I'm not saying that anyway <laughs> other than to say you don't really know anyone that you're watching on television or you're watching on the internet you, you only know what we show you now i think i'm pretty uh, i'm a, i'm really transparent but there's still things about me that you don't know and i say that to say is that like when when people accuse the people that you admire you you have to really take a step back and say okay I don't really know them unless you spent personal time with us. And even some of the people who I've spent personal time with, 
don't really know me, right? And so I'm not saying this to say that you should believe anything and everything that you hear about me, but I'm saying just in general, you don't know these people until you actually have time to spend time with them and get to know who they are off screen. And I think it's important for you not to become so invested in us as individuals as much as you're invested in the, the, not only the work, but the issues, right? The sexual harassment, sexual assault is a part of our work. Working against that should be a part of our work on a regular basis. It's not as footnote for us to say, oh, let's, you know, let's get back to, no, that is the work. And when you see, uh, uh, Noah, you said that you said it earlier, uh, you call it, it's an epidemic. It is a guy, it, I don't want to cuss on this one, but it is an epidemic of unseen proportions. Like I had no idea until me too, exactly how prevalent it was. You had an inclination, right? You heard about it. But when you see just about every single woman who follows you and that you follow, save maybe 0.1%, you saying that they've been sexually assaulted. How can you ever say, let's get back to the work? That is the work. Um, I mean, thing. it's definitely a part of the work. The other thing is like, we just saw the report from, there was an article about, you know, two young women on one work for the Hillary campaign, one work for the Bernie Sanders campaign, you know, both reported incidents of sexual harassment. We are aware of the prior issues with Arturo Comona, who was a senior staffer on, on the campaign. I mean, this is, it is, it's, it's endemic in society in general, the way we treat and appreciate and respect women. It is a problem and it permeates throughout our regular life and work spaces. We can't just keep ignoring it, whether it's boys will be boys or whatever the case may be, or you're overreacting or whatever it was, or it was fine two weeks ago. I mean, like, and we, we need to do more than just no means no. Right. Um, we, we need we need to have greater conversations with, with our kids at younger ages, too, about, you know, what does consent really mean? What does that really look like? And stop thinking about it as some initial transactional interaction and something that's really more of a fluid concern and understanding when we're conversing and dialoguing with people. Um, but 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 that's why I'm really happy that we're able just to have just a general conversation and, and, and chat, because like just watching this all fly on the hand. And again, it doesn't really matter who you believe, if you don't believe them, whatever the case may be, it's how we talk about things. Absolutely, the communication matters, right? Because really, you know, you're also monitoring and paddling, uh, modeling and patterning behavior. And so this could actually prevent the next person from daring to take that step and come forward because people with larger platforms can just simply pile on together and try to shush people up with smaller platforms, right? That was another thing I noticed. You had a bunch of people who are quote unquote, you know, let, 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 let the pro, you know, Jordan folks, pro Tatum folks tell a bunch of nobodies who are upset and mad that they were fired or whatever the case may be and they had an exit grind. You know, I mean, you know, we, we need to hear their side of the story to be able to judge for ourselves what's going on. And people were claiming about what about due process? That's a, you know, th those are standards in a court of law, you know, in terms of, you know, ex accountability and respect and what we're doing in our movement spaces. We, we don't have time to sit here and give potential aggressors the benefit of the doubt and then shut out people who are proclaiming to have experienced certain experiences. I mean, we, we really do need to be looking at other models for dealing with this than, than how the regular court system works, because when you look at the regular court system, that's a really bad analogy, folks, because most of the times when you're talking about rape, sexual assault, these types of incidences, people who really should be getting, you know, dealt with do not.